about. Tony Schiavone comes out. He's interviewing Brian Danielson. He said he promised his daughter he'd wrap up his career when she was seven. She's now six. He said that he wouldn't go quietly into the night. He would kick everyone's head in. He said that uh, this is going to be the most epic year of his career. Uh, you know, Danielson came back early from this injury to replace Punk. He challenged Zack Sabre Jr. at Wrestle Dream in October. This is a match people have been questioning and wanting for the last eight years or so. Maybe more than that. MG, when is the last time we, first time we... Look, I got a, I got a Zack Sabre Jr. Uh, Evolve poster right behind me. Uh, fantastic show I was at with him there. I, I the, People have wanted this. You know, there is obviously a, a style comparison between the two. There is, uh, you know, it's the lineage of Danielson and his style of wrestling and uh, the technical aspect of wrestling. And, and I think Zack Sabre Jr. has done a tremendous job of continuing that. And I think he's an unbelievable wrestler. This match is now set up for a Russell Dream. There's going to be other obvious big matches set up for this thing. But bringing in Zack Sabre Jr., I think this is a great idea for this. To answer your question, um, I believe they they had... We're set to do this at the first. Um, uh, oh, I can't think of the name of the uh, forbidden show door. now, but the yeah, forbidden door, the first forbidden door show, and then Danielson got hurt. Remember? Yeah, and they were they were set they were going to do it then, and then they didn't, and of course they didn't that show that didn't. show didn't have Danielson on it, Omega on it, and and Punk on it, right? Correct. Those yeah, three was, were gone. What a different show that would have been. So Omega, I don't know who and Omega still was going to write. Yeah, it still did great. Mm -hmm. But, you know, obviously it was going to be Tanahashi and Punk and then Saber, uh, Zack Sabre Jr. and Danielson. But Danielson. who was Omega going to face? Do you, do you remember well, I, that? I don't even think they thought about it because he was gone. He was still quite far from being recovered. So yeah. he was right in the middle of his time, that, that nine months or whatever. Interesting. So I'm curious who it would have been. Maybe you they didn't done, even have it. Listen, you could have done o o Okada. You could have done something else. You know, fascinating. There's a lot of these what-ifs in AEW because of injuries. So, he's cutting this promo. Ricky Starks comes out with Big Bill. And Ricky's talking about how the spotlight is on the other guy once again and not on him. Uh, they're doing somewhat of a Shawn Michaels and Diesel thing here. A lot of comparison for Big Bill with Diesel. What they're doing with Kevin, what they did with Kevin Nash. I think this is great for Big Bill. You know, he has... Something. He has the presence. He's a giant. You don't have too many former basketball players from Queens on your roster. He's seven feet tall. Did you know you cannot teach that? I don't know if you knew that. You were waiting to pull that one back out. I was out, waiting to you? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they're, they're, they're continuing with Ricky here. Uh, then you saw the save come in with, with uh, Moxley. And Moxley starts getting his butt kicked by Big Bill. So the match is going to be Moxley and Big Bill. You'll probably have Danielson and Big Bill again. And I, I'm very curious how different it, this time that feud will go. Do you remember how much people hated that feud in WWF? WWE? See, I'm stuck on that Jim Valley stuff. Jim Valley did a thing on 1993 wrestling. And, I'm, and I've been saying WWF since yesterday. You think this will be better, MG? Between Big Bill and uh, Danielson? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think, you know, when you take them out of, I think just a matter of fact of dumping the style of WWE and the formulaic television match that they have to have, these guys get creative. And especially with Danielson, I trust that he will yeah. um, uh, do something, do bring, give us something good, even if it's a, a short match. Listen, if this is his last year of wrestling, do you put the title on him? I think you do. I think you should. You you have make to. And and it's and it's fascinating to me that we have not had that you know, he got hurt. He went away twice, right? There were two instances he 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 went away. And he's also not the guy to politic to become the world heavyweight champion and be on TV and have his own title, right? He's not that guy. But there is something to be said about having him as a world champion. And this may be a good opportunity to do something. 
You know, Here's if you want to take the title off of Max in some way, uh, you know, if it's Adam Cole, then then Danielson, you could do that. You could come up with something interesting here. Now that you have pay-per-views every month coming up. I got an idea that might that might help here. Yeah. Um, and, and you and you said there's no title no title on collision in the last segment, but John Moxley is now the you know, international champ title. What if you did a program? We they did a uh, inner squad pro program, and uh, Danielson gets that international yeah, title. Yeah, I mean, and just runs with it and just are, runs are you and going then retires to, it. Or, are you positioning uh, the international title as equivalent to the world title? At that in that case, like, I think you could. is this is this like a universal title and a world title? Because if that's the case. Um, it's possible Most you certain, could do that. You just have to up the lineage and have him Moxley and then Danielson hold it and really, you know, stack some wins and really make it a big deal. Yeah. And and then, and then he can just, when he's done, he can just say, I'm done. And here's your title back. Yeah. And, I mean, listen, the only, know, only way that would work, honestly, right. If you, if you, and this is a great, this is actually something I have not thought about. You take that title you elevate it, right? And I think I think the elevation was obviously there with Orange and what he did with that title. He defended it every week and he had great matches, but he wasn't defending it against like Adam Cole, MJF, uh, CM Punk, and, and Kenny Omega. He was defending against some really good talent. If you elevate that, Moxley now has the title and Moxley's defending it to, you know, as a as a world title challenger. Uh, you you have an opportunity to do that as a secondary title. I don't know if you want to. I don't know if they want to. I should say. I don't know if it's gonna if it's gonna do anything. Uh, it may be a little bit of a crutch here, and where you don't put the title the world title on people that you want to put the world title on. You know, I I don't know. I don't. It, interesting concept. But I do definitely think Danielson should get that title. I you know this this if you got one year left. How many of these matches do you want to see? I want to see Danielson and Omega again. I want to see Danielson and uh, Adam Cole. I want to see Danielson and Mox. I want to see a lot of these matches. Danielson, Zack Sabre Jr. is another one. You have an opportunity. How about Danielson and Eddie Kingston? Danielson, Eddie mm -hmm. Kingston. You know, and mm -hmm. once There's... again, once again, we did not get that Danielson punk match that people want to see. Not the WWE version. We once again did not. We were, we're we were robbed of that opportunity.